And uh, we'll praise the Lord. <clears throat> praise the Lord. Well, kingdom greetings and grace and peace to each and every one of you. Good love from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Prophet Tazima McQueen here with Kingdom Global Impact Network, whereby we preach and teach on unadulterated and valuable word of God, legislating God's kingdom right here on earth. I'm truly elated and ecstatic to be on this broadcasting today. I thank God for all his grace and his mercy, amen, and all his benefits towards us. For those of you who are just coming in, please go ahead and represent your city and your state. Amen. I'm truly honored and elated to uh, see you all on here uh, today. So I thank God for every one of you. Thank God for your life. Amen. Truly, you all are truly amazing. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about a very interesting topic. So while you're on here, I'm asking you guys if you can go ahead and like and share. I'm going to go ahead and do the same on my end. Amen. As you guys are tuning in, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I just invite a few people to this broadcasting as well. All right, so just give me some time here. I do apologize for um, the delay. I do see none other than uh, Prophetess Ina Okun. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me, woman of God. God bless you. Truly always a pleasure and an honor to have you on here. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. I really do. I do see um, uh, Andres. Andres. Um, Men of God, great to have you on here. I also see none other than my cousin Susan Henry. Thank you for tuning in. Amen. God bless every single one of you. You all are truly a tremendous blessing, and I appreciate every single one of you. Amen. I do see my cousin all the way. Amen. I see my cousin Isaiah Mentor, man of God. Thank you for joining me. I love you. Amen. It's always truly a pleasure to uh, have you on here. I love what you're doing. Continue to um, be an inspiration to people through your music. Amen. I see also my wonderful, lovely sister that I'm planning to get on here one day. Amen. My sister, Aquila McLean, always so supportive. She's also a preacher herself. Amen. If you think I have revelation, she has a lot of revelation. I'm telling you. So I'm trying to drag her on here one day. <laughs> Amen. Until she's comfortable. I do also see none other than uh, this awesome woman of God, Debbie. Amen. God bless you all the way from Arizona. I love you. Thank you for tuning in. I greatly appreciate you all the love and the support. Amen. For always uh, being here on the broadcasting. I appreciate uh, the consistency, the love. As many of you know, I'm on here every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. I'm also on, on YouTube under the name Prophet Tazima McLean. You can also find me on uh, on. Dehima McLean Ministries here on Facebook. You can also follow me on Clubhouse as well. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram under the name Dehima McLean. So those are different ways you can get connected. And also, as you can see there on the um, on the uh, the screen there, you can see the website. Amen. I also see none other than Bishop Christopher Monin in the house. God bless you, men of God. If any of you have any testimonies, please feel free to share. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about the lion and the lamb. Now, um, this may be a part two because I did not get into as much study as I wanted to because I wanted to kind of really um, dig into this. So I'm just going to kind of um, take it on uh, surface uh, tonight. But I want to talk to you about the lion and the lamb. So I do pray that this teaching will bless you. Also, I'm going to be spending um, a great bit of time in praying for some people tonight. Amen. As I was led to uh, so many people today had asked me for prayer, so I think I'm going to kind of uh, go also in that direction. But I want to talk to you tonight about the lion and the lamb, and I do believe that this message is going to uh, bless you tremendously. I also see none other than Chrissy Lynn in the house. God bless you. Thank you for joining me, woman of God. I always appreciate you on um, the love, the support. Uh, you have always been a tremendous, tremendous blessing uh, to my life, so I thank God for you as well. Amen. Just give me approximately about uh, a minute or so, and then I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let me just go ahead and play this advertisement, and then we can get right into it, okay? God bless you, and thank you for tuning in. So don't disconnect, guys. Go ahead and like and share as many people as possible, because tonight is going to be a very, very interesting topic.
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, God bless you, every one of you tonight. As I shared tonight, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the topic entitled The Lion and the Lamb. So tonight, guys, it is going to be very, very interesting and impactful. Let's go ahead and open up in prayer. So Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, tonight, God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the honor. Tonight, God, we just want to thank you. Oh, God, for we say that this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you, oh, God, for all your benefits towards us. God, we thank you, oh, God, hallelujah, for you are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. Tonight, God, we decree you, God, hallelujah. Tonight, we say that you are Adonai. You are Elohim. You are the mighty God. You are Jehovah Jabor. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Makadesh. God, you are the mighty man of war. God, we thank you. We say that you are the lion and the lamb. You are the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. You are the good shepherd. You are the door. You are the truth. God, you are the Sunday. God, we say tonight, God, that you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And tonight, God, we just want to glorify you. God, we pray tonight, hallelujah, that as we are here in your presence, oh God, to break bread and to fellowship, that God, tonight, that the people will begin to receive, oh God, a supernatural natural fresh touch uh, and impartation and activation i thank you oh god tonight uh, that god as they are here to receive the word uh, that you will begin to take the word uh, and recalibrate the climate of their lives uh, i decree and declare tonight that their lives will never be the same. I pray, oh God, for your transformative power, oh God, to be released in their lives. I thank you, oh God, that you're opening up the windows of heaven and that you are causing it to rain. I thank you tonight, God, hallelujah, for a supernatural outpouring, a supernatural move of God, a supernatural mobilization, a supernatural touch, a supernatural win tonight, God. We are believing you for the supernatural, oh God, tonight. And I thank you, oh God, Hallelujah, that you are remembering these, your people. I thank you, oh God, that as they are here, oh God, to receive, let there be a fresh wind and a fresh fire and a fresh anointing. We will understand yesterday's anointing that it cannot do for today. And Lord God, we ask, oh God, that you will touch us afresh. Yes, God, I pray, oh God, that you are burned on the inside of us. Yes, God, I pray tonight, God, hallelujah, that Lord, that there shall be a, a stirring, yes, God, a stirring in our souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For God, tonight we need you. We don't just want you, God, but tonight we need you. And Lord God, we pray. Hallelujah. For fresh revelation. That God, that you shall begin to do a new thing. According to Isaiah 43, 19. That God, you should say, behold, I shall do a new thing. And now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? And Father God, yes, even tonight, we pray over this broadcasting. We dip everyone under the blood. We dip this broadcasting under the blood. And we decree and declare, hallelujah, that and no which no one will be able to intervene, intercept, uh, holy or interrupt uh, this live broadcasting. That God of the people will begin to receive uh, that there will be no blockages, uh, holy or no interferences in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere. We take uh, control over their airways uh, and we say, Oh God, that their plans are nullified uh, and we shut down any demonic networking, uh, holy or surveillance tonight. Uh, and we ask, Oh God, hallelujah, that you will take full control. Put your words in my mouth. God, holy that your people may be blessed. Allow it to germinate, oh God. Don't allow this word to fall on stony ground, but let it bless the hearts of your people. God, yes, let those that have an ear tonight, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Holy concerning their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I am so excited. Tonight, I want to bring this message to you. I want to talk to you tonight about the, uh, um, the lion and the lamb. On the last segment, I spoke to you about the eagles and the ox. And tonight, I want to talk to you about the lion and the lamb. I'm telling you tonight, amen, tonight is going to be a very a powerful message. Amen. The lion and the lamb, it speaks about uh, the nature of, of God and who he is. I want you to understand, we were talking about God and his nature. We were talking about, amen, his uh, divinity. We we're talking about who he is, uh, uh, the all-encompassing God. Uh, we're talking about about his uh, uh, the presence of God we're talking about everything that he encompasses his sovereignty and I want you to understand tonight when we're talking about the lion and the lamb I want you to understand that this God that we're talking about that he's omnipresent hallelujah he's um, an 
Nashin God, the God that we're talking about tonight, the liar and the lamb. He's an omnipotent God. Hallelujah. He is the God that guides. Hallelujah. According to John chapter 16, he is the God, amen, that is a giver of gifts. Are you hearing me tonight? Which simply means that he gives salvation. He gives deliverance. He gives healing. Hallelujah. He gives a gift. He gives your promises. He gives you inheritance. But the God we're talking about tonight, the lion and the lamb is the one that is holy. He is known as the Holy One of Israel. The God that we're talking about tonight. Hallelujah. He is the God that intercedes. We simply mean that he is the door. Hallelujah. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is a paraclete. He's a paraclete. He is the mediator. He's the one that stands in between. He's the one that stands in the gap. Are you hearing me tonight? He is the one that is a giver of life. All last week I spoke about that he is the resurrection. He is the resurrection and the life. Holy to God be the glory. He is the God. Holy that performs and works miracles. According to Hebrews chapter 2 and 4, he is a God that mentors, which means that he is a teacher. Holy, he is rabbi. He is the God that regenerates the God, amen, hallelujah, that quickens our mortal man, hallelujah, that causes us to be sanctified, to cause us to be in a place of sanctification. Are you hearing me, Facebook Live? He is the God, hallelujah, that searches all things, the eyes of God that searches all to and fro the earth. He is the God that gives strength tonight, hallelujah, he is the God, amen, hallelujah, that answers my fire. I'm talking about the God tonight, hallelujah, he is the lion and the lamb. I thank God for who he is. I thank God for his nature. I thank God, amen, that God has came and he bled and died for our sins. I'm going somewhere with this message tonight. I promise you, I'm, it's going to be a blessing. Do not disconnect. This message is going to bless you exponentially. Are you hearing me? So uh, the topic tonight is pregnant with a lion and a lamb. Come on, somebody. I want you to type that in the text box. Pregnant with a lion and a lamb. And this message is going to be truly, truly um, uh, uh, edifying, pregnant with a lion and a lamb. The Bible says, amen, that, uh, uh, that there was a particular woman by the name of Mary. And, and Mary was the mother of Jesus. Uh, and as you know it, uh, the Godhead, amen, the Bible says that Mary was, uh, uh, was pregnant, amen, with Jesus Christ himself, the Messiah, uh, the chosen one. Uh, he, uh, he, she was pregnant uh, uh, because she was a virgin. She was pregnant. She was sought to be pure. She was pure and sanctified in nature. And she was pregnant, amen, with the Messiah. Amen. But not only the Messiah, but she was pregnant with a lion and a lamb. Come on, somebody. Pregnant with a lion and a lamb. And God will look upon her and have favor on her that he will impregnate the sovereign God. Amen. Will impregnate uh, this woman. Hallelujah. With a, 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 with a, a, um, a God that is sovereign. Uh, that he will impregnate this woman with the second person of the Godhead. Also known as the lion and the lamb. Now come on somebody. That God himself. That in his infinite wisdom. That it baffles the minds of those amen that are even apologists. It baffles the minds of the greatest theologians. It baffles the minds of those that may be agnostic. It baffles the minds of those that may be atheists. That how can God himself. The second person of the Godhead. The first person which is God. Can take the second person of the Godhead. And put it in the womb of a mere mortal being. Amen. Hallelujah. And have her to be pregnant. Amen. With something that is mortal. Amen. Uh, with something that is also immortal. So immortality and mortality was also in the womb of a mere woman. In the womb of flesh. Hallelujah. Glory to God that, that Mary came from the, the birth of a man and a woman. But how is that God will put his sovereign being into the womb of this woman? Are you hearing me today? And so she was pregnant with a lion and a lamb. God had favor on her. Now I know many may postulate and say, well, how can you prove that? Listen, that, that this uh, Jesus could have possibly been on the son of Joseph. But may I submit to you today, amen, that Jesus himself, though he was born of a woman, he was fully God and fully man. He had dual citizenship, which means that he occupied in both, amen, both realms. Hallelujah, in the spiritual realm and also in the natural realm. Uh, we also have dual citizenship. Hallelujah, he legislates and governs both dimensions. 
dimensions. In fact, he governs all dimensions. He is the sovereign God. This is the God that we're talking about. And so she found herself pregnant. And yes, she had been ostracized. She had to go through many ridicule because she found herself pregnant, although she was a virgin. Come on, somebody. How can you be a virgin and be pregnant at the same time? But God, amen, have favor upon her that she, amen, will be carrying the kingdom in her womb, that she will be carrying the Messiah, that she will even be carrying heaven in her womb. She will carry the blueprint of God in her womb. She will carry the plan of God in her womb, that she will carry, amen, hallelujah, the throne of God in her womb, all at the same time. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me tonight? And so she was pregnant with the lion and the lamb. But I want to go back a little bit further. I want to talk to you about tonight about how how, amen, before Mary became impregnated uh, with a lion and a lamb, amen, the Bible says that when God created the heaven and earth, amen, he created us to live in a multi-dimensional universe, and the universe consists of realm, the spiritual realm as well as the, the physical realm, so we live in a multi a d- dimensional a universe and the physical realm uh, uh, is, is three dimensional it consists of the earth the sea and the sky but you know that in the beginning uh, God began to separate the firmaments from the earth and all that good stuff uh, and so those are the realms in which we occupy however the, in these three realms is where we experience the most warfare now I'm going to say this and I'm, I'm going to go further back and I'm going to bring it to, to, uh, to the text in which I'm talking about and so the reason why we experience warfare in these three realms uh, is because uh, we're in, in a multi-dimensional universe. Uh, according to Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, it says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, uh, and ye that dwell in them, and woe be unto the inhabitants, uh, those who are watching on Instagram, woe be unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for Satan has come down to you with great wrath, knowing that his time is short. And so when the enemy was exposed uh, out of the third heaven, are you hearing me, Lucifer, amen, his his nature began to change. He began to lose his godly attributes and kept the gift, but lost his godly attributes. And in this realm, amen, when he was cast into the earth realm, he then uh, did not yet have jurisdictional authority until the Adamic fall. So he did not have dominion um, in the garden. It was Adam that had the dominion and the authority. That was a uh, his dimension in which God had told him to govern. And so he did not have jurisdictional authority yet until the Adamic fall. And as a result of the Adamic fall, because they were tempted of the serpent, as it talks about in Genesis uh, chapter 3, uh, what began to happen is that there was a disconnection between uh, the creator and his creation, uh, God and Adam and Eve. And this this connection, because of the sin, it put a gulf between God and man and in the spiritual realm. So though God is omnipresent, there was still a gulf between them because of sin. So if you notice in Genesis chapter 3 verses 8, it says that they were able to hear the Lord God walking through the garden in the cool of the day. But Adam and Eve uh, found themselves among the presence of the trees in the garden and the lord began to call out to adam and he said to adam he said adam where art thou and which simply means that i want you to follow along with me this simply means that the presence of the spiritual realm that god encompasses was already there but they begin to hide themselves from the presence of god so as i said before god is all encompassing and his presence was there, but they hid themselves from the presence of God. And so now that we see that literally there's a gulf and there's two realms now in the midst. And then God says, where art thou? And, and it's not that God could not locate them or find them. And, and it's not that he could have find them, but in the spiritual realm, there was a dislocation. Are you following along with me? There was a dislocation in the realm of the spirit. They were no longer operating in a divine dimension and the communication system was breached. Uh, that's why, uh, that's why uh, the father asked the question, Adam, where art thou? Because there was a breach in the communication system. And I want you to follow along with me. It's gonna get powerful. So watch this, their disobedience created another dimension but it was not a spiritual dimension that's why they hid themselves from the presence of god and they began to create another dimension and realm this 
Israel the Simrel. So they went from a regenerated spiritual being to an ungenerated man. Are you hearing me? And the Bible said that the angels of the Lord, amen, exposed them out of the garden because they were no longer able to operate in the garden. And from that, a curse came upon them because of the sin. And usually we know that a curse cannot come without a cause, but the cause was disobedient and the cause was sin that created a curse. So a cause creates a curse and the curse was their disobedience and their sin. So as a result of that, they were exposed of the garden and up until this day the angels of the lord are sanctioned to guard the gates of that garden of eden right and so they guarded it with the, the the flaming sword and the bible goes further to say that the adam that adam the curse that was upon adam that he would have to uh, work on the sweat of his brow all the days of his life and then also for the woman that she would give birth in pain but i want to go a little further uh, by saying this and i'm going to begin to break this down to you that's right the covenant was broken but watch this watch this the bible says that when that began to happen amen the scripture says that he was going to allow the woman the woman are you hearing me which is also a representation of the church he was going to allow the woman, in spite of the sin, in spite of the sin that occurred, he would still come through a woman, huh, to bruise the head of the serpent, to bruise the head of the serpent. Now, I'm going to break that down to you. But before I break that down to you, I'm going to talk to you about the lion and the lamb and Mary being pregnant with the lion and the lamb. So I want to kind of give you a, a, a breakdown about that. So when you're talking about the symbol of the lion and the lamb, it is used in both Christianity and Judaism. And this was to represent the Messianic age. And when we're talking about the Messianic age in Christianity, we're talking about um of the Christ resur of being Christ resurrected. This is talking about the Messianic age, the future period of where there's going to be a uh, uh, god's universal reign and peace uh, that he will bring you will also find this in christianity and you will also find this in judaism okay so this we're talking about the, the messianic age okay when he brings peace okay and this is also a reference of the con to consummate the kingdom of god uh, of the world to come okay so we're talking about the lamb we're talking about uh, we're talking about the nature of him coming into the earth realm as the lamb. Why? Because he were to be sacrificed. And you go back into the Old Testament. The Old Testament says that the priest had to offer up sacrifices. Why? For the remission of the sin of the people. Right? And so we had to do all this stuff. And they had to offer up sacrifices. And the priest will have to constantly go in into the temple to offer up these sacrifices. And even they themselves had to be consecrated. And they had to put bells. And they had to go through all this religion, ritualistic and traditional stuff uh, uh, to offer up these sacrifices, the blood sacrifices for the people's sin. But the people's sins were too great because of the curse that came through the Adamic fall. So can you imagine how much sacrifices that had to constantly be made and the curse, amen, that would have been a, a stigma on them. The curse that would not have been removed just by a mere animal. So the Bible goes further to say that he had to send the Passover, the lamb, which is the lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. And the Bible says that he became a man of propitiation for, of our sins. And in Romans chapter 5, it simply says that uh, he, amen, died for the remission of our sin, but he came, amen, he died uh, once and for all. Let me go ahead and go to that text here. Let me just kind of look for the text because I want to make sure I'm quoting it cor correctly. Okay, I want to make sure I'm quoting it correctly. And so we know him to be, we know him to be uh, that Passover lamb okay the one that took away all the sins of the world and i thank me to god that he did thank me to god that he did right because uh we know that if we had we not amen um had the sacrifice of jesus what would begin to happen is simply that we will have to constantly going through all of this so the bible says like this it says watch this it says here in the text in romans chapter 5 it says but god demonstrated for his own love for us and while we are yet sinners christ died for us since we have 
have not been justified by his blood, how much more about we be saved through his wrath, right? And I'm going to go further to say, he says, for, for if we were God's enemy, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son much more. Having been reconciled, shall we be saved from his life? Okay, so we see that we were saved through him. How? Huh? We were saved through him. That his blood, his sacrifice was the provision for our salvation. How his sacrifice was the provision for our justification. His sacrifice was the provision so that we may have a life and we are able to reign and rule with him. Are you following along with me? And I'm going somewhere tonight because I want to uh, give you this teaching. Okay? And I don't want you guys to disconnect because this teaching is very important. And so we see that he became uh, the sacrificial lamb for us, lamb of God for us once and for all. Uh, if, if you even look at one of the sermons of Augustine, it says that uh, the lion uh, stands for the Christ resurrected. Okay? Christ resurrected and the lamb for Christ uh, sacrificed. Okay, so when we're talking about the lion of the, and the lamb, we're talking about his resurrection, and we're also talking about his sacrifice, his sacrifice. But I want to go a little bit further into saying this, and this is not going to be a very long teaching because I will get more into this. Maybe I'll do a part two, but I want to kind of break down the um, the simplicity of it. I want to kind of give you a little bit of teaching tonight, and then I'm going to go into a more uh, uh, administration, okay? And so the Bible says in Genesis chapter three, uh, and, and it calls him, it calls him the lion and the lamb. And, and why the lion? So when we go into Genesis chapter three, they said that it, this is called the proto-evangelium. Okay, which simply means the first gospel. This is where it was an indication or uh, prediction of the Savior. Okay, so we see that this was in reference to a messianic prophecy concerning the Savior. So many postulate, many believe that Genesis chapter uh, 3 verses 15 was the first text that pointed towards the Savior. Okay. And this messianic secret that lied uh, in the woman. So even, even in the garden, huh? Even in the garden, I would say his presence was always there. The presence of the son was always there, waiting for the appointed time, waiting for the right dispensation that he may be revealed unto mankind. Okay, but that dispensation did not come yet because we had to go through our judges. We had to go through all of the other things. Right, so the time of the messianic secret of the Messiah was not yet to be released. But I, I, the prophet Isaiah gave another glimpse uh, and a foreshadowing that he was to come. And I'm going to go into this. So we're talking about Genesis chapter 3, 15. We're talking about him coming. And this pointed to the messianic prophecy. And I'm going to break that down to you. They believe it's the first gospel, okay, the, as a prediction. So it says, watch this. Okay, it says, number one, that he will crush your head. And which is mean the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. This simply means that, watch this, it simply means that he was going to put enmity, okay, between uh, you and the woman, between your seed and her offspring, okay? And she shall fatally uh, bruise the head of the serpent. And that was through the seed. Who is the seed? It is Christ in which they were talking about, the Savior, the Messiah of, of who was to come. And in the second a messianic prophecy was also in that, is that he will strike the heel of the serpent. Okay? And it's, watch this. The text said that the serpent will bite the heel of the woman's seed. Now, this was begin to show, uh, this passage was begin to show that yes, Jesus is the Savior and he, he was going to come and bring redemption to all mankind. But watch this, watch this. In that, that he was going to bruise the heel, which simply means that there was going to be, there was going to be a war that would take place. A war that would take place be between the enemy himself, the serpent himself, that would strike again and meant to contend and fight against the plans and the promises of God. 
okay? So the scripture clearly reveals that he was going to come and begin to fight and contend against the Messiah himself. And so watch this. I'm going to even go into the text. I'm going to break this down to you. I'm going to go into Matthew chapter 4 and, and talk about the temptation that Jesus uh, had faced. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to expound maybe more next week about the lion and the lamb. But I'm going to talk a little bit about it because, watch this, the enemy knew himself that the Messiah had come. Okay, so let me just go to the text here really quickly. I'm going to break that down to you and then we're going to go right into a little bit of administration because I promise I'm not going to be on for too long tonight. I want to kind of talk to you. So I hope you're getting a little bit of education uh, from these, uh, these teaching tonight. And I'm going to show you. And so when you look at uh, uh, the synoptic gospel of John, the Bible says that in John, the light came into the world and darkness comprehended it not. So even the, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees could, could not recognize that Jesus, the Messiah, had come. And so they were there waiting for the Messiah. And there are even some that are still waiting for the promise of the Messiah. There's still some that are waiting. But watch this. He had already come in that dispensation. But light could not, doctors could not comprehend the light. When he came, they did not recognize him. Why? Because he came as a carpenter's son. He came and met in the simplicity of a mere man. And he was a, a fully God and fully man. Are you hearing me? Uh, the son of God. He was the son of God. Now, some may even question his deity, but all throughout scripture, it points uh, to the fullness of his Godhead. You can find that in Colossians. You can also find that in the synoptic gospel of John. And so all throughout the scriptures, it points that he is the son of God, that he is the Messiah, that he is the second person of the Godhead, that he is the savior. And so they were waiting for this Messiah to come and they were waiting. So they did not recognize him because of the simple in which he came, he came as a carpenter's son, and they thought that he was blasphemy. Huh? They began to uh, say that he was blasphemy and that he was cursing. He was cursing God. How could you equal yourself up to God? This is blasphemy. And so they went about trying to challenge him, trying to challenge his doctrine, trying to challenge his deity, trying to challenge him why he came, who he was. Where did he come from? But I want you to understand this. That why is it that the enemy understood the message uh, that the Messiah had came, but mere men could not understand it? Let me break this down to you. Before I even go to Matthew chapter 4, let's go back into Matthew chapter 2. I want to show you that all throughout the scripture, though it does not say it verbatim, okay? It may not say it verbatim, but I'm going to show you that there are so many texts that point towards that he is the Messiah. The Bible says, and watch this, the Bible says, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came a wise man from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jew? I want you to understand. Come on, somebody. I want you to understand. What did they call him? King of the Jew. What did they write on the cross? What did they write on the cross? King of the Jew. So before, this is a foreshadowing, that before they even wrote it on the cross, huh? And Pontius Pilate putting it on the cross, you had the wise men said, where is he who is the king of the Jew? They understood that he is already the Messiah. I want you to understand, that's right. They already understood that he was the lion and the lamb. They understood that the Messiah had already come, but it took wise men to see that. Okay, and if you want to break that even down to a uh, uh, modern vernacular, you know some of these wise men, they were astrologers. Okay, they were observer of time. And if you even want to be even more practical, you would even say that they were kind of a form of a, uh, uh, in a new age doctrine that we're doing now. Uh, you would even say that they were like witches and warlocks. Okay, why is it that they were able to understand? They studied astrology. They were able to study the cosmos. Huh? They studied the stars and they saw the star of Christ at, in the east. And they came and said, what did they say? Huh? Let's go to the text here. It says, it says this, where is he that is born king of the Jew? Foreshadowing, even before they wrote it on the cross. For we have seen his star in the east and had come to worship him. 
we have come to worship him why is it that the those who were so learned those who uh, uh, had studied the law could not even recognize him so this is the religiosity that we're talking about that so many people could not even recognize huh they couldn't recognize christ when he came but it took someone spiritual it takes those who have spiritual insight and spiritual intel to be able to discern the presence of god and who god is i'm gonna kind of be even more practical with this when when, when she was when mary was pregnant huh with jesus the bible says when she went to go and meet elizabeth her baby leaped okay her baby leaped why it took something spiritual to recognize something spiritual that's what the bible says that the carnal man cannot understand the things of god why because they are spiritually discerned and you can never recognize the messiah you cannot recognize christ you will never know god unless it is spiritually discerned you've got to be in a spiritual place to discern a spiritual god so even going back into the time of adam in the beginning that's why there was such a breach the breach and the spiritual blindness came when adam they lost sight of christ they lost sight of god they lost sight of his presence so they lost sight so when they sinned they didn't only uh, uh became desensitized to the presence of god but they also lost their sight so watch this when go further now they they uh, those who are religious also have lost their sight they can't see because they were only studying the word they only had the logos but they did not have the rhema they did not have the the spirit of god so it requires a spirit to understand a spirit it requires for those who are spiritual to understand that which is spiritual but they only had the logos they only had the word what am i saying to you tonight it is not good enough just to have the word but yet you don't have the spirit that's why a lot of people that walk around having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof because when you are to get connected to god you've got to have a revelation of who he is so in the womb of mary that carried the lion and the lamb john the baptist who was also the forerunner of jesus recognized my assignment is also here with me huh so uh, watch this elizabeth was carrying i know kind of all over the place but i'm trying to bring the correlation so you guys can understand elizabeth carried she carried the revelation huh she carried the assignment and the revelation of the forerunner of christ in her womb so that's why her baby leaped when they saw a, a, a mary why because revelation recognize revelation spirit recognize spirit so if you only carry the word of god you will never understand the spirit of god that is not good uh, enough just to have the word there are many people that are learning what did apostle paul says i did not come to you with articulation of speech i didn't come to you with just a, a, a eloquency of speech but i come to you with demonstration of power and that's the rhema uh, uh, that's the rhema the spirit of god that's what makes the difference that's what enabled them that's what gave them power how you the power of god was in the messiah that's why he said i did not come to abolish the law the law is great that is the standard of God. Yes, we need the word of God, but I've come to fulfill it. The spirit of Christ has come, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of prophecy has come to fulfill the law so that, it will, that a prophecy and a fulfillment and the fullness of the gospel can come into full terms. But that could not happen. The law could not be fulfilled without Christ. So they could not recognize the fulfillment when it came. But it took something spiritual to recognize it. What am I saying to you today, even in modern time it is not good enough just to have the word many people go to seminary or our overseer will say cemetery you'll go to seminary and those things are great it's good to have theological background believe me i've been following my friends who are just like brilliant in their mind you know um and i've been learning and gleaning from them these things are great but what good is it without what good is it without the spirit of god huh and so i'm gonna kind of um uh, fast forward here 
And so now the Bible says in Matthew chapter 2, they did recognize it. They recognize it. Watch it. They recognize his star in the east. Let me go a little bit further down. When Herod heard the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded them where Christ, okay? Christ, we're, we're saying Christ. We're talking about his deity. We're talking about his mission. Christ, the mission. We're talking about his whole personage that he came as a savior, should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah, art thou not least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor, huh? That shall rule my people. Here we are. We see another foreshadowing of what the prophecy of, of, of Isaiah said. The government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Okay, the lion and the lamb. You all know he's all, all of those things. Okay, so that was another foreshadowing. But why is it that Herod recognized it? The wise men recognized it, but the scribes and the Pharisees, Sadducees, could not understand or comprehend when the Messiah came. And it's just like many of us today that watch this, that he can be right in front of your presence. The presence of God can be with you, right in front of you, but yet we lack spiritual sensitivity. We don't even know the presence of God. There are many people today that follow God. They follow, they follow the doctrine. It sounds good. They, they, they walk in religiosity, but they don't know who he is. I'm telling you, there are many people that say that they are Christian, they are believers, that they are blood washed, uh, 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 water baptized, that they are Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, that they are blood washed, but yet they still don't know the Spirit of God. That's why even going back into the text, that's why even Jesus had asked uh, um, uh, Peter, okay, Cephas himself, he said to him, who do men say that I am? Huh? Who do men say that I am? And then watch this. He began to he began to lay it out. Some say you are a, some say you are a prophet. See, they spoke about their own human intellect, their understanding of him, uh, how they rationalize him, how they can logically perceive him. Some say you are a prophet, some say you're Elias, but then he made it personal. So he began to make it personal. He said, I want to see if you got the revelation. Because there are many people that follow me, many people that are looking for a Messiah, but you follow me for all the wrong reasons. You follow me because your, your, your forefathers done it. You follow me because you want to be a part of a religious organization. You follow me because you believe this is your belief. You follow me because of something that I did good for you. You follow me because of the fish and loaves, but now I need to make it personal. Who do you say that I am? Huh? So he uh, propositioned him. Who do you say that I am? Hey, God bless you. I see a uh, uh, man of God on here. Amen. Who do you say that I am? And then he got the revelation. He says, thou art the Christ. Watch this. Huh? He didn't just say thou art Jesus. He says, thou art the Christ. Okay? The Christ. Check that off. The Christ. It spoke about him being the Messiah, the lion and the lamb. The, the Christ. Watch this. He went further to say the son of the living God. Not just a son, but the son of the living God. Which also means that he got the revelation that he is the second person of the Godhead. Okay, we don't use the word Trinity because we know that's from Catholicism. We don't want to get into that. But okay, so we don't use the word Trinity. We, we use the word Godhead, okay? So we're not, I'm not going to go into the argument of Trinitarianism tonight, but I, I want to talk to you about he understood the revelation of the Godhead, okay? And then what did he say? Christ went further to say to him, flesh and blood, has not revealed this to you okay flesh and blood has so it means that you could not get this in seminary you could not get this because of the um the pharisees and the sadducees you could not get this amen just by following or uh, merely following me but you got a revelation how do you get a revelation huh 
How do you get a revelation? By getting divine intel. Okay? Now watch this. Everybody who um um those who have divine revelations are those who are spiritual. Now I'm going to make a distinction. Notice I didn't say those who are believers in Christ because watch this. Satan himself Satan himself and even Herod they didn't follow him but yet they understood the Christ nature and his mission and asked him why he came. That because he understood that that the government that he came with the government of God, he came to bring the kingdom of God here on earth. The kingdom, huh? The kingdom age, and then we're gonna also go to the messianic age. He brought the kingdom with him, so another government came, and that's why Jesus was so persecuted because he came with God's governmental system he came to god's governmental laws he legislated god's laws here on the earth are you hearing me that's why he said i didn't come to abolish the law because i understand that there's already a governmental order put in place by moses huh by moses our forefathers i'm not i'm doing what moses did on the tablet but what i come to do is to fulfill it Huh? I have come to fulfill it. So now that he came to fulfill it, he has gotten that revelation. And then what did he say to Peter? He says, okay, now that I'm Cephas, now I call you a rock. And upon, huh? upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. We're talking about the bride of Christ. Okay, so only those who are spiritual, those who are connected to God, those who got a revelation of who he is, are the ones who have that jurisdictional authority. God bless you. Those who uh, have that jurisdictional authority are those who carry the revelation. You cannot carry power unless you get a revelation. You cannot gain revelation and spiritual intel and spiritual insight unless you walk with him and unless you are spiritual enough now even those who are not of christ understood they got intel but why is it that the church today don't even have that information huh we don't have divine not just information but revelation so we have a lot of information but we lack depth and revelation are you hearing me tonight we lack depth and revelation we lack depth and revelation so he wants for us to get into that place that I just don't want you to know me as a giver of gift. I don't want you to just know, follow me for fish and loaves. Huh? I don't want you just to follow me because your, your ancestors and your forefathers did it before. I don't want you to follow me just because I perform a miracle sign and wonder. If you notice all throughout the scripture, those that who are able to access him were those who received revelation. Receive revelation. And in order for you to receive that revelation, you've got to be spiritual. You've got to be in a place of spiritual incubation to gain that, that, that understanding, that deposit. Huh? Let, let's, let's go rewind, okay? I'm gonna jump in, I'm jumping back and forth into text. I know a lot of people probably don't like that, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to be like a, a, a textually integral, but I'm just trying to kind of, give you the correlation of what i'm talking about so you'll see me jumping from old testament to new testament i'm trying to make a parallel and an understanding okay i, I i'm trying to follow my big brothers who like okay let me do all the extra stuff <laughs> but i'm trying to um i'm trying to work this out let me try to break it down to you so that's why again adam adam did he adam lost that information he lost the revelation of god how did he lose revelation? By gaining information from Satan himself, the deceiver. The deceiver. The deceiver. So when Christ came, Christ came back as a, a, a revealer. He came back as the epitome of revelation to remind us. To I have, I have friends that are theologians, so <laughs> they'll beat me up if I mess up. <laughs> so it, it, it's teaching me to be a little bit more calculated when I speak. Okay, so um, and so so I, I want you to understand tonight. I want you to understand tonight that um, 
that what he did is that I, I, I came for you to regain your senses, regain the revelation of who I am. Regain the revelation. You've lost your recollection. <laughs> My friend is laughing. You lost your insight. You lost your recollection. You lost it. Okay. I, I, I'm trying to be confident because my friends be watching. <laughs> so I, I want to say that. So he came to remind us of who we are in him, how who we are in him. So when he said to Peter, you got the revelation, which means that you are able to tap into the frequency of heaven. You, you came back into the understanding of who I am. I hope, you're, I hope you're catching this. And I pray that this teaching is helping you tonight. You understand who I am. Okay? It is not good enough just to say I go to church. It is not good enough just to say I read the Bible. It is not good enough to have perfect church attendance. It is not good enough just to say, oh, well, I go to church. Listen, you've got to have a revelation. A revelation, that's right. It only comes by seeking the deeper things of God. Deep calling unto deep. Okay, deep call unto deep. Deep call unto deep. You can only gain revelation by being in the presence. That's why Adam lost the connection. He was no longer in the presence. So the Bible said that he began to put figs on himself. He began to put figs on himself. Why? Because he, Adam tried to fabricate a presence that to compensate for the presence that he lost. I'm going to say that again. So when Adam put the fig leaves upon himself, he understood that he was naked. So that that's when God said to him, who told you you were naked? Who told you that you no longer had my presence? Who told you that my presence no longer covered you? This is so good. So he began to put a fix upon himself as a fabricated, manufactured type of, 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 of covering. And that's what many of us do today. We have lost the presence of God through sin, through disobedience. So what we begin to do, we fabricate a false presence and we call it God. And so I believe, my theory now, I believe that even in that, that was a birthing of a false doctrine. Hear me. Even what in the gesture, in the gesture in which Adam did by putting the leaves the figs on himself, that was a that was the beginning, huh? That was the beginning of a false doctrine as well. Okay, so false doctrine also came to the mouth of Satan, huh? Himself. That's why, you know, my big brothers always say, you know, doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. It makes so much sense because he the father and the presence of God never deviated away from his doctrine. We even see doctrine in the Bible, in the Bible, in the beginning. In the beginning, he said, you should do this, but you should not do that. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What was he trying to tell Adam? He was trying to tell Adam, do not take on a different doctrine. Don't receive knowledge that is contrary to what I spoke to you. Huh? But when Satan came, he gave them a similar doctrine that was that sounded like God, but it wasn't God. So false doctrine can make you lose revelation. False doctrine can pull you out of the presence of God. False doctrine can make you heretical. Huh? It can cause you to be uh, a heretical. Okay? So what began to happen... That took him out of the present. So what is, the, what is the point I'm trying to make? I'm trying to say to you, it is not good enough just to have the logos, but you've got to have the rhema, the present, the spirit of God. Because it is the spirit of God that brings enlightenment to the letter. That's why the apostle Paul says, okay, yes, the doctrine is good, but the letter kill it after a while. You need the both of them. You need the letter and the rhema. It goes together. Both should be in covenant one with another. The, the, the logos and the rhema. Because with, without the rhema, what happens is that the letter, it kills you. Because we can't fulfill it. We can, I know, I, I sure can't fulfill it. <laughs> I, you know, all of us, we, none of us can fulfill it. 
I know I can't fulfill it because for the hero of fit, I, I'm telling you, I'll mess up. <laughs> I can't, I can't even keep up. I can't remember my own but Dana Burks much more. <laughs> for me to be remember all these laws, who got time for all of that? I can't remember all her, all 600 and something plus laws. Nobody can keep that. They're imperfect being. Okay, so I, you know it behooves me when I hear people say, "Oh, you know, uh, uh, we don't need Christ. We just need this." We just need the world. Or sometimes when you hear the Israelites talking, they, they, oh, we don't need all that, and 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 Christ didn't do all this, and they, you know, it, it, it's it's heretical. It really is because we cannot fulfill it on our own self. Can you imagine trying to keep all the laws? That's too much work. <laughs> That's too much work. I'm telling. I would have. I would have given up a long time ago. But what did he do? He came as the Lamb, the sacrificial Lamb. Okay. To fulfill that, he fulfilled that. All right. So I want you to understand that we cannot accomplish righteousness or justification or sanctification in our own human effort. It's impossible. It's impossible. <clears throat> and so, so the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says that. So he came. He came. And let me go further here. I, I said I was going to um go to Matthew chapter four. And I'm sorry for jumping all over the place like this. So I'm just bringing parallels, okay? Or, or if you want to call them cross-references, we'll even say that, okay? Just to make sure it sounds right, uh, cross-references, okay? Um, to make sense of it. So we go here also in uh, Matthew chapter 4, and I'm going to conclude shortly because I want to start to pray for some of you. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, it says, that when Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness, to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, that's the point I want to make. What did he say to him? And when the tempter came, watch this. He came again. He made his appearance again. So watch this. Satan himself is after the sea. Okay, he's he was after both Adams, both Adams. Don't think that Satan don't understand timing, and don't think that he don't understand the deity of Christ, and don't think that he don't understand doctrine. What theologian said is like this: the devil is the greatest theologian, and he's still the devil. <laughs> huh? Satan is the greatest theologian. And he's still a devil. How would it be that he's so presumptuous that Christ, Jesus Christ himself is the word, huh? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, okay? How that Jesus Christ can be the word and the epitome of the word, and even Satan himself is using the word against the word, huh? I want you to understand that his agenda was to attack both Adams. He attacked the first Adam, which we, we have the first Adamic fall, the first Adamic fall in the garden. So he was able to, to, uh, to, to, to sabotage him in that regard. So then he came again, understood timing. What did he say? Why? Because watch this, watch this. He understood timing. He, he understands time. Revelation 12, 12. I gave you that reference. He knows his time is short. So he was able to recognize, okay, since the first Adam fall and the heel of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Don't think that he didn't understood, that he didn't understand, huh? That, that Satan was going to, that, that Christ was going to come again. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So what did he do? I'm going to go back to the messianic secret, okay? So we, we talked about how it was revealed in Genesis, okay? How it was revealed in Genesis. That they, that they believe it's called the first gospel, okay? But now here it is. Satan challenges him and says, okay, if you be the son of God, what, what, what was that? What was that? Talking about his messianic nature, huh? If you'll be the son of God, do that. Now I want you to perform a miracle. What was he trying to do? When he said that to him, 
His agenda was for him. I'll tell you how Satan is so strategic. His agenda was to try to get Christ to operate outside of his timing, huh? outside of his timing, so that he can reveal the messianic secret. Because if I reveal the messianic secret, what will begin to happen, he will not be successful and efficient in going to the cross. So even Satan himself understood that his government was about to be interrupted and the gates of hell was about to be shaken. That's why he said he made an open shame of the devil. His government was in danger. This world belongs to him. How do I know that? He, watch this, he understands, watch this. Every king, he's a king of his domain. Jesus is a king. That's why even Jesus, when Pontius Pilate said to Jesus, oh, well, if you're the king, well, well, where's your kingdom? And what did Jesus say to Prophet Pontius Pilate? My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. This is not his jurisdiction. I came here to fulfill the law, to do all of those things, but this world does not belong to us. So watch it. Satan himself being a king understood, wow, another king now has entered into my jurisdiction. This world don't belong to us. Won't be unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. When Adam had fell, we lost jurisdictional authority to the earth. Okay? It did not belong to us, uh, Satan. But because of the Adam before, we lost jurisdiction. Now, what Jesus did, he gave us, watch this, he gave us authority. And though we can exercise jurisdictional authority in this government, in the earth realm, but it doesn't mean that it belongs to us. It just means that the blood of Jesus that he shed for us gave us immunity to operate in this in this government that don't belong to us. Are you hearing me? Is, is that making any sense? Is that making any sense? So, so what he said, what did he say to him? He said to Jesus, okay, so now another king showed up in my jurisdiction. And then, so he says, all right, so what I'm going to begin to do, he said the devil taking him up to a holy city a holy city and set him on a pinnacle of a temple and he said unto him if thou be the son of god cast thyself down for he shall give his angels charge of, uh, concerning thee psalms psalms 91 and they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone okay let me tell you he was with the father in the beginning he was with the father in the beginning remember you are talking about an anointed cherub here they are the highest form of angels. Cherubs are the highest form of angels. He was a cherub. So don't think that he did not recognize the nature of the father. Because at one point, he too was a son. Angels are, are sons. Huh? They're stars. So he recognized. He recognized the star. Are we going back? To, are you following me? Because uh, Lucifer also means star. So you don't think a star is going to recognize a star? That's why I'm making the correlation between Matthew 2 and Matthew 4. The wise men saw the star. The reader of stars. Satan himself is also a reader of stars because he himself is a star. How do I know that? Isaiah 14. I will exalt my star above the mount of God. Huh? He's a star himself, but he's not the bright and morning star. So he recognized this is something of the father. He recognized the father's DNA in Christ. If thou be the son of God, huh? Because I, I recognize you're from a, the kingdom of where I came from. Come on, somebody. I want you to understand the revelation of what I'm talking about tonight. I, I really wanted to come on here to teach you, to kind of give you an understanding, because sometimes we need teaching. You know, I prophesy, uh, sometimes we need the teaching, okay? <clears throat> and so, if we get too much prophecy, we become charismatic and not balanced. So, so I recognize the star. I recognize who you, I know who you are. This, I know it's not your kingdom, but here's what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer you parts of my kingdom. 
I'm going to offer you part of my kingdom. Watch this. And then he says, watch this. Jesus said to him, Jesus said unto him, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Come on, somebody. And again, the devil taking him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showing him the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them in there and say unto him, all of these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. He wanted Jesus to reveal his, uh, his, uh, 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 his messianic secret and also to reveal himself. Then Jesus said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. Now, guess what? Now, now we see the crushing. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, why did he say that? Now, we know that the devil is not going to serve God. He's already lost his privileges. There's no redemption. There's no repentance for Satan. Okay, he's the devil. <laughs> okay, he's the devil. He is the epitome of evil. But worship the Lord like that. What was he talking about? He's talking about you've got to submit to the government of God. So though you are showing me your splendor, though you're showing me your glory, submit to the Father, the government of God. Huh? You got to submit to my assignment. I've come to fulfill my assignment. That was the mission, and he used the word. So when he began to tell him the word, he said, it is written. So you've got to understand that, that he began to use the word. He began to use the word. And in the using the word, he began to speak of his mission as the lion and the lamb. The lion and the lamb, meaning I came as a sacrificial lamb. You're going to bruise my, my heel, the heel of the woman, but I came as a sacrificial lamb because Satan himself saw that this one is going to be the sacrificial Passover lamb for our sins once and for all. Huh? So that way, why now I'm going to regain authority for them. I'm going to overrule and override your government, your system, your laws, so that I can give them back the authority that they once had. And he also comes as the lamb, as the resurrected Christ. Okay? So not only did he die as the lamb, but he also resurrected as a lion. And he's also going to come back as a lion. The one that comes to judge. Okay? Are you hearing me tonight? <clears throat> The one that comes to judge. So, what is the point I'm making? I'm gonna try to make this a part two. So, guys, if this, if you have received this, let me know if this has blessed you. I want to start to minister to many of you tonight. Okay, I want to go ahead and minister to many of you tonight. What am I saying to you? Why am I bringing this up? There are too many of us, amen, that don't recognize Christ in His fullness. That don't recognize Christ in His fullness. It is not enough just to carry around and wear figs. It is not enough to say that, okay, I'm going to fabricate a gospel because the devil is going to challenge you. Huh? He's going to challenge you now that the Holy Spirit has come. The, uh, Jesus Christ went away in an expedient that will go away. Now that the comforter has come, he's also going to challenge the comforter in you. So we are almost, we are like small gods in the earth realm. So if he challenged Jesus Christ himself, and the third person of the Godhead is in us, why do you think he's not going to come back again? So Satan always make his appearances, always make his appearances whenever he sees something or someone interrupting his government and his system. So because you have the third person of the Holy Spirit inside of you, you are still a threat to his kingdom. So although Jesus died, Black died, came as a lamb, uh, also as a lion. He understands, guess what? They still carry the DNA. So now we are all images of Adam, offsprings of Adam, offsprings of the sons of God in the earth realm. So we, what Christ did is that he allowed his spirit to multiply in all of us. So the fact that he, the spirit is in all of us means that we should have a greater impact. So it behooves me to know 
Why is it that we aren't making a greater impact if the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of all of us? Because what he did, he took the third person of the Godhead and he put it in us. Watch this. So not only did he put it in the womb, in the womb of Mary, he also put the Holy Spirit in our wombs today. Come on, somebody. So now we too are pregnant with the lion and the lamb. Come on, somebody. That's why he says we are the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is a virgin. Come on. This is so good. I want you to catch that. The bride of Christ is a virgin. Huh? So if we, if we are the bride of Christ that's a virgin, that simply means that also we are like a Mary in the earth realm that carries the lion and the lamb in our womb. So he's saying again, and now you're pregnant. Now, now you're carrying something again inside of you. You're carrying something inside of you. And but this time it's my Holy Spirit. And not only is it in one woman, but it's in all of you. Come on, somebody. When we're talking about the bride of Christ, it is not gender specific. It simply means a man can be pregnant with the Holy Ghost. A woman can be pregnant with the Holy Ghost. We're all virgins. We're all the bride of Christ. He multiplied himself, which means a greater work shall you do. So don't think that Satan is not going to come with his challenges because you threaten his government. You threaten his system. This is still his domain. So what Christ is saying, I need you to occupy until I come. So now, occupy until I come, contend for the faith, preach the great commission, fulfill the work, finish the work that I have started. So when I do come back as a reigning king, as a uh, come back as a, the uh, the reigning king and the warrior, guess what? Now I come back for my bride. Come on, somebody! I hope you're catching this with me tonight. I hope you're catching this with me tonight. And that's the assignment. That is our assignment, saints of God. He wants you to be pregnant with the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody! I want you to type it in. I'm pregnant with the Holy Ghost. I'm pregnant with the Holy Ghost. Now, if there's any questions, I'm going to open room for questions, and then I'm going to now begin to pray. If you have any prayer requests, and there are some people tonight I want to go to war for, amen, there's some people I want to pray for, amen, some uh, 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 individuals have uh, called me on this week, those that are mentored, those that are, are partners have had some serious, serious prayer requests. Uh, and I want you to touch and agree with me on tonight as well. I'm going to um, pray and prophesy, release word of knowledge uh, to and with uh, many of you on tonight. Okay, so I do pray that this message was a blessing for you guys. I pray that this message is a blessing. Come on, that's right, Pastor Greg. I'm pregnant with the Holy Ghost. That's why, right, Eno, I'm pregnant with the Holy Ghost. God bless you, Sharona Peterke. I'm pregnant with the Holy Ghost. Listen, I'm going to take the time to interject while you guys are putting up your prayer request. I'm gonna put out. Uh, uh, I'm gonna interject for those of you. Amen. I see this woman of God on here. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for just jumping in. I know you probably can't stay, but thank you for tuning in. Amen. Apostle Joe Maddox. God bless you. Kingdom greetings. Thank you so very kindly for joining me today. I'm truly humbled and honored, and I appreciate your presence. Thank you so much for tuning in. Amen. So um, that's why I'm pregnant with the Holy Ghost. I want to go ahead and pray with and for many of you. On tonight, amen, I'm going to be releasing the word of knowledge. Come on, somebody, we're releasing the word of knowledge and prophesying as the Holy Spirit leads. I'm going to also take this time out. If this message has blessed you, please go ahead and, and sow into fertile grounds. I'm going to give you this opportunity to give. Okay, so this is your giving opportunity, giving moment, amen, for, uh, to, uh, for this message, amen. You're not paying for the word. You're not paying for prophecy. You're not paying for prayer, okay? Um, so I want to solidify that. But if this message has blessed you, if you felt that this message has confirmed a few things, if you want to support this ministry, uh, please take the time out to go ahead and to, to sow. And also for those who are sowing, and at other times say, please um, let me know that you have given, you have sown, so that way I can uh, call your name out because I'm using two different devices here. I can't see your comments apart from those who are here on the stream yard and Facebook. Okay, and, and those who are Instagram, I can't see who are doing it personally. So you have to let me know that you have sown so that way I don't miss your name. 
okay? So let me go ahead and begin to pray. And I want to begin to war. Amen. Hey, I see my brother on here. God bless you. Uh, Prophet Lee Yandre, I love you, brother. Uh, you know, if you want to jump on, you can always, always, always welcome here. I truly appreciate you. Thank you so much for the prayer. I love you uh, greatly, and I'm also praying for you as well. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Man of God, if you would like to jump on, just please let me know. Amen. And I would, I would glad you ex gladly accept you on here. Man of God, I can always uh, send the link and, and glad you accept you on here uh, if, if you desire, if you have the time. Uh, so just let me know. If not, I totally understand. Amen. Hallelujah. Shabre katala makaya. Lebre telebros katala makaya. All right. Amen. I see Sharona Peterkin. Guys, go ahead and put up the prayer request. Amen. Uh, 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 Prophet Leandre. Amen. I I'm praying with it for you. I love you. Men of God, continue to stay encouraged. Continue, continue to hold up the blood stained banner. Hallelujah to God be the glory. Men of God, I am praying with it for you. I am praying also that God will strengthen you in this hour. Uh, uh, to God be the glory. All right, listen. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna pray for many of you. All right, so if you have um if you're desiring prayer, please let me know. Please let me know. Okay, and I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Shebra Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, uh Prophet Leandre, if you want to just let me know, say yes. Or not now, and then I I I will proceed. Okay, just say yes or not not now. Amen. You know when my brother is on, when he comes on, I always welcome him to come on here. Amen. Because he's always a tremendous blessing. Okay, so just let me know. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and pray uh, uh, for these individuals. So just let me know uh, if you can type in Prophet Leandre, yes or not now. Um, before I begin, because I don't want to um start. Shabre katala makaya, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Father, I give you praise tonight. Lebro talamakaya, Father, you are worthy of praise. Hallelujah, God, you are worthy of all the glory. Father, I thank you tonight, God, for these your people. God, there is none like you. There is none that is greater than you. God, we magnify your name. You are worthy of glory. Hallelujah, Father, I thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for who you are god tonight lord god we magnify you we glorify you we lift you up shabre kapada messiah levren telemakaya lord god i thank you oh god hallelujah that you are activating every single person on the live broadcasting that you are touching them tonight father lebra telemakaya lebra katalamakaya amen i see prophet gray on here man of god god bless you i see my brothers joining on amen Le leandra if you can join me let me know uh, Prophet Gray, I'm here on Facebook Live. If you'd like to join me, just go ahead and let me know. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have to get you on here one day as well. All right, let me just go ahead and flow. Let me just go ahead and flow. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you tonight. Lord God, we praise you. God, we give you glory. Let me know if you have given and I'll just go ahead and begin to call out your name. Go ahead and begin to put up those prayer requests. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you right now, oh God, for, for Sharona Peterkin. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you, oh God, hallelujah, that you're covering this woman servant under the blood. I thank you, oh God, for your divine supernatural protection over your woman servant, Father. Holy Ghost, I thank you that now, God, that you are now thrusting her into another season. Yes, God, woman of God, I hear the Lord said, I am now opening another season. There's another season of breakthrough that is coming to you, woman of God, coming to your life. Lebra Talamash. Yes, woman of God, there's another a dimension that the Lord will have you to tap into. Glory be to God. The Lord says to tell you, woman of God, hallelujah, that as you're applying yourself and as you have applied yourself, that he's now allowing for you to walk in a greater dimension, a greater place. He said this is your new season. Yes, he's even opening up supernatural doors on your behalf. A Sharona Peterkin, the Lord says to tell you, woman of God, yes, God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every plan, every vision that he has uh, spoken unto you in time past, the Lord says, amen, begin to up. Uh 
God, to begin to, to activate those things that he's activating you in your prophetic destiny. There are some things that you uh, put on the back burner. There are things that you have put on the side. But the Lord says, it's now time, amen, to begin to activate it. He said to tell you, word of God, that this is not the time and the season of any form of distraction. For yes, the enemy will even try to send distractions your way. He will even try, amen, to send arrows and darts your way to try to throw you off course, amen, so that you cannot recognize the season and the time that you are operating in. But the Lord says, let's begin to tell you, word of God, hallelujah, that I am now realigning your life and realigning your destiny. He said to um, don't worry about the my new things or worry about your family. For yes, I am even taking care of those things. He said, begin to focus on me. Yes, for yet yeah, there are even a greater ministerial grace that is resting upon you. For yes, I even saw great distractions coming away as I began to look at you in the Roman spirit. And I began to look at your forehead. I saw distraction. And the enemy are, is using that as tactics and tools to literally throw you off course so that you that way you can begin to miss your season. But there are divine realignment. Yes, come into your life even now, woman of God. Divine realignment. And he says to remind you of the book. Don't forget your book. And the Lord says even to tell you that I am maturing your voice in this hour. I am maturing your voice in this hour. And do not concern yourself with the affairs of this world. Don't concern yourself with the affairs of those. Okay, I see my brother on here. And I want him to jump on here. Man of God, I'm going to send you the link. Amen. To your inbox. Okay, so look out for a man of God. Holy, he says, amen. To tell you, man of God, do not get distracted. For what I'm about to do in your life is literally getting ready to blow your mind. He's maturing your voice, so get ready for the overflow. Get ready for the overflow. Get ready for the overflow. And anything that is trying to throw you off course, the Lord says amen to. That he wants you to... Uh, um, the Lord says he wants you to amen to, to reshift your focus. We shift your focus. Shabre patada bakun lebre ansaya. Roba shebre kete lebra tataya. Lebram babadiyo sakata bakaya. Yes, God, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way tonight. Father, we give you praise. Man, I'm going to ready to send you the link. Have your way tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, I'm going to let my brother go ahead and flow along with me tonight. Amen. To God be the glory. The man of God is also prophetic. So I'm going to let my brothers, amen, tag team with me tonight and, and prophesy. Amen. Man of God, I sent you the link. I sent you the link. Amen. So as soon as you accept the link, uh, uh, and just, just come on, okay? Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Abednego. Uh, Lufaya. Stay on here. I, I want to release a word to you or what a prayer as well. I, I'm going to let my brother, amen, tag team with me. I'm going to let my brother tag team with me. Hallelujah. So as he sends me, as he comes on here, we're going to kind of tag team. Amen. To God be the glory. So, woman of God, I hope that you receive this word. Listen, for those of you that have given, please let us know on tonight. Let us know on tonight. Hallelujah. Because we want you, amen, to receive. We want you to receive this word. We want you to receive a fresh impartation of the Holy Spirit. We want you to receive a fresh wind. We want you to receive everything that God has in store for you tonight. Glory be to God. I know that the Holy Spirit, amen, is about to show up for, for many of you tonight. Holy, for many of you tonight. Libra. There are some individuals I want to pray for. Uh, Deborah Scaffy, for those, amen, who I want the men of God to come on here and prophesy to some of you. I'm going to prophesy to some, most of the newcomers and those of you who are usually on here, the regulars, I'm going to let the men of God, amen, prophesy to you guys. Amen. So, and the reason why I also bring them on here to tag team, but I don't want that lines of familiarity. So, so you not because I you. Some of you know me that you guys don't receive. So, Apostle Gray, let me know if you're still on here. Let me know if you're still on here. He's probably trying to uh, tune in. Sabre Katalamakaya. Let me go ahead and send him the link again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way, God. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. God, uh, guys, stay with us. Guys, go ahead and stay with us on tonight. Amen. Let me go ahead and make sure that he received it. I'm going to give him some time. I may even just jump onto uh, someone else in the meantime until he comes on here. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. La brata bakaya. Le brende de Dios abrakai. Yes, abratu tabakaya. Have your way, Father. All right, let me go ahead and take another name until he shows up. Amen. Okay, okay, you're logging on to your laptop. Okay, all right, man of God. So I sent you the link, so just as soon as you come on, I'm going to um, let you um, just kind of flow with me and prophesy with and for most of these people on here as well. And I'm going to um, just take um, anyone that I did not catch before, that I did not catch before. kataya. I want to pray, Marcia, let me know if you're still on here. I want you to, guys, to touch and agree with me as a man of God is trying to come on here. I want you to touch and agree with me uh, uh, with uh, um, a woman of God, okay? I'm not going to say names or anything like that, okay? Just I want to touch and agree. We're praying for someone uh, who is, is not well. Okay, so we're going to touch and agree. Let us begin to pray for healing. So as we're praying for healing, guys, so remember, we're praying for healing tonight and stay on here because I want the man of God to prophesy to some of you on here on this evening. Okay, I want him to tag in with me. To tag in with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's go ahead and pray for healing. So Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, oh God, right now, oh God, for this woman's servant and, and her daughter. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I pray right now tonight uh, that God healing is the children's bread. Come on, saints of God, pray with me. That healing is the children's bread. Uh, we decree and declare tonight, God. Uh, hallelujah. Listen, I want you to be sensitive. Uh, don't put up your request yet. Okay, when we're praying for one person, I want to focus on one person. When I say to put up a prayer request, then you can, okay? I don't, I don't want you guys distracting me with other prayer requests. Just stay posted until I say post it again, okay? Because I want to pray for this person. Amen. This is a serious thing, okay? So, Father God, I thank you right now, oh God, that you are, 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 are is healing. We pray for supernatural divine healing. One accord is being is very important. So right now I pray, oh God, that for healing, supernatural divine healing, oh God, for this woman serving. Hallelujah. I pray, oh God, that every spirit of infirmity, every spirit, hallelujah, of sickness, every spirit, oh God, that has come to eat up her flesh, that God, that she will not be, oh God, hallelujah, a victim of any demonic affliction, any demonic sickness. We bind up the spirit, hallelujah, that come to eat of her flesh, any spirit of cancer. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare, it will not prevail right now. God, I thank you, Holy Ghost, that you are Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. Yes, God, you are a healer. And I thank you, oh God, that you are touching her right now. Hallelujah, under the blood. And now I decree and declare that it is so. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you tonight. God, you are to occur. I thank you right now for supernatural breakthrough. Right now, God, let, let healing come into her body. Let healing come into her body. But Father God, you are Jehovah Rapha. And God, tonight I say it is done and it is so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. We apply the blood. Amen. I preach you in the matchless name. Amen. Men of God, Apostle Gray, thank you so very kindly for jumping on the broadcasting and taking the time of your busy schedule to be with us on tonight. Amen. I saw you on, I uh, saw you literally on Instagram and I had to just invite you on here. You're always truly a tremendous blessing. So I, I want to take the time to honor you, men of God, and however the Holy Spirit asks you to flow, please feel free to do so. I don't know if you can see on another device um, uh, some of the prayer requests that, that are here on this evening. No, I'm not. Not see if if you have another device um uh, you can just click on it shabra kadori and sata bra and sata but i'm fine to be here with you yeah so you just have to go on my facebook page and then you'll just see the comments of the people hallelujah hallelujah and then then you guys can oh, go ahead and put up a prayer request i i just wanted to tag team with this man of god on tonight Amen. And I know that he, he flows very strongly in the prophetic. He has a strong apostolic and prophetic grace. Amen. And I'm telling you, you guys, I'm going to let him, um, uh, after he begins to flow, um, after the broadcast, I'll let him I'll have the opportunity to tell you guys where he, you can find him as well. Amen. So that you guys can also, um, I want him on Clubhouse. He's also on Clubhouse. Amen. I see none other than, uh, my sister on here, none other than, uh, woman of God, Desiree Mondesier, God bless you. Kingdom greetings and grace and peace to you, woman of God. 
Thank you so very kindly for joining me on this. Let me, Marcia, Marcia said her hands is uh, tight. Um, Marcia, okay. both hands are still cramped. Um, it's okay if I pray. Yes, it's yes, absolutely, men of God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. And I thank you that you made the human hands. Yes. So you sent your word and healed her and delivered her out of all of her destruction. And the Lord says he's touching her hands now. Is it okay? If, if you can't see, is it okay if I just give you some names? Yeah, I'm praying for the lady. Um, are, you, are you able to see Stella, it? The lady with the crab hands was... Uh, Marcia Gossett. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I'm looking on my phone. Oh, okay, great, okay. Marcia, the Lord is touching the hands right now. Right now. The Lord is touching the left one now. He's touching the left one. Now he's touching the right one. Now go like this. Go like this. Jehovah Rapha has healed you. Go like that. Go like that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes, Father. Now, uh, name is Marcia Garrett. How's your, how's your hands now? How's your hands now? While she's Experiencing the presence and the power of God, you can call names. Okay, we have our Deborah Scaffy and, and Marcella Brown. Now, Marcella and Debbie, they honor you. Yes, yes, they all they always do. For Debbie, uh, this is the season where God is going to uplift you from a place of discouragement to a place of empowerment and even to a place of wisdom where your words is going to be heard, but it's not only heard and received, but compensated for. The Lord says, this is your reward season where many will begin to remember you and thank you and appreciate you as a viable gift that you are. The Lord said, there's some things about school that you have to brush up on to go back on. I don't know. If you're going for a business degree, a law degree, or a doctor's degree, yes. but there's some things that you have to brush up on, says the Lord, in the area of school. That was, what's the name I said? Debbie. Debbie. Let's see how she responds. And is the other one's name? Okay, we have a uh, 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 Deborah Scaffy. Deborah Scaffy. Yes. For this is the season of the upgrade in the area of the healing anointing that God has placed in the voice as you begin to sing praises unto the Lord. And the Lord says he began to touch thy hand with the healing grace. Yes. For the Lord says he's bringing you from the back and he's bringing you to the forefront because he put the evangelist anointing on the inside of you, like unto the woman at the well that will begin to go and tell people about Jesus. And the Holy Ghost will begin to grab people's hearts and they'll begin to come and to know Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. The Lord says also there is a new confidence <clears throat> and a new boldness that is given um, unto you. If I hear you say unto the Lord, I don't know what to say, how to speak. The Lord says, be not like Jeremiah and say, you don't know what to say as a child, but open up your mouth and I will fill it. For truly I will put my words in your mouth as I put it in Jeremiah's mouth. And you will begin to speak to all that I was sending. The Lord says, do not be afraid of their faces. Neither be intimidated by their degrees of their education. Know that I wish them to our with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. For even there's a witty invention that has your name on it, says the Lord. Yes, Father, have your way, God. Have your way, have your way. La brokata, la brokata, yeah. All right, guys, go ahead and put the request up. And for those of you that are also giving, please uh, do that because I, I, as I should, I can't, I can't see those who are. So you just have to let me know that you did, okay? The young lady whose hands, how's her hands now? 
her name was i want to yeah, see she, her. Said she was trying to bend them she says she's trying to bend them try don't try his name is Jehovah Rapha, for the Lord God that healeth thee. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Man Here we have Marcella Brown. For there's a teacher on the Marcella, the teacher. Yes. Yes. For the, the Lord is giving me a teacher's grace and even a teacher's mantle. And I hear the name Joyce Myers. You have a teacher's mantle like that, like Joyce Myers, to, to gather the multitudes and to feed them with simplicity and instruction where they begin to gravitate and gravitate and gravitate. For the Lord says, take your time, do not rush. Uh, don't be so much concerned about the Greek and the Hebrew, the Latin and the Aramaic. Just go line upon line, precept upon precept. For the Lord says, I'm going to supernaturally empower you to teach. You will be teaching from the Spirit. For the Apostle Paul says that I pray that the Spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him will rest upon thee, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. So the Lord says, I'm getting ready to give you the Spirit of wisdom and revelation. So as you teach, my revelation shall come out of you. For the Lord says his words are spirit and they are life. And my life and my spirit is getting ready to come out of thy mouth into the lives of many as you begin to stand up and be the teacher that I called you to be. And that's the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. So men of God, I, I, however long, if you know, you wanted to however you want to flow whoever god has to share is with you amen and i'll, I'll just take it right after you as well okay well, if you have desiree she's asking prayer requests for uh vindication marriage finance and we have a bendigo that also prayed for his basketball career now with the finance is she a tither um the lady who wants anytime i pray for someone with finances if uh, she is she a tither but that's that's a request of a few people on here but if they are tithers, I only pray for people finance if they are tithers. If they are not tithers, I cannot bless them financially because then I will be now going against God. Because if you rob God and then I pray for you, then I'm going to be robbed of the grace that's upon my life because I set myself in agreement with robbery. And so... Um, She's requesting to pray for her marriage as, as well, Mar marital breakthrough. Marriage, marriage, okay. Now, when people ask to pray for marriage, this is let me say this how this is how the Lord raised me. If you ask for prayer for finances, if you're not a tither, I'm going to share with you to start tithing. Right, number one. Number two, you ask to pray for marriage. I'm going to ask you who's your pastor. Number one, did you go to your pastor about it? Number two, if you went to your pastor about it, what did your pastor say? We're not your pastors. We are ministries. The ministry gives that perfect the same for the work of the ministry. We're not your pastors. Your marriage situation goes to your pastor first. Now, if you went to your pastor about it and your pastor did not respond, then we can pray for your marriage. But the first one, it goes to your pastor because the Bible says when you bring the tithes and the offer to the storehouse, that there may be meat in his house and prove me now here we say the Lord, if I would not open you, the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough for you to receive it, right? Now, so the storehouse is where the revelation is at. So wherever your tithes and office is at is where the revelation of God is at for your life. And so you're supposed to seek the revelation of God for your life where your tithes and your office is at. Now, if you go to your local house and you talk to your pastor about your marriage and they don't respond to you, then you can reach out to other ministry gifts. But it's like the, the spirit of prophecy is subject to the prophet and the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And the first thing the prophet does is put you back at the feet of your leader. And so I put you back at the feet of your leader. Now, if your leader has not addressed that situation and you went to your leader, then I can speak to your marriage. Yeah, I know she's a very honorable woman of God. Um, she's also a, a powerful leader as well. If you can just at least just kind of offer for a, a word of prayer for her, 
she's a, she's a pastor like she she has she sits at the pastor um, i don't know the personal details so i, I if we can just kind of give uh, like a just a word yeah, of and, and another thing i want to say if the people don't know especially when you pray for marriages i'm a man that's married i'm a married man seven children <laughs> when you pray for people's marriage an attack comes to your marriage okay an attack comes to my marriage if i pray for your marriage so i have to make sure that you are in alignment with your spiritual leader because i don't violate spiritual principles or spiritual laws okay i understand, I understand. you understand that because i pray for marriages but the tax comes to my marriage once i pray for you but if you're properly aligned with your pastor and i pray for you good so the first thing is your relationship with your spiritual leader Okay, so however the Holy Spirit is leading you, man of God, there's any specific person that the Lord had shared. I I, I want, if you can pray for a, a Sheba, she's requesting prayer, Sheba Q. Sheba Q. There's a, sensi there's a sensitivity of the spirit that the Lord wants to give to you. And the Lord says he's calling you into a season of prayer and fasting because you're hungering for the supernatural. You like to read the Psalms and you remind of David, the one who's really after God's heart. But the Lord says, not only that, but you have to move in supernatural signs and, and, and wonders because I want to send you as a witness. But I call him, I, I hear him calling you a witness miracle or a miracle witness. Something to that effect, a miracle witness or, 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 or a witness miracle where you will begin to speak to people and the evidence of heaven will begin to show up in your life. Otherwise, the Lord says you will not go with empty words. The scripture in 1 Corinthians 2, 4, and 5, Paul said that when I came to you declaring the gospel, I did not come to you excellency of speech of man's wisdom, but I came to you in a demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand, rest, nor rely in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And the Lord says, daughter, I called you to be the power carrier. The signs, wonders, and miracles. Hallelujah. Did she receive it? Did she receive it? Uh, she's not commenting back, but I, I'm sure I'm certain she did. I see Debbie says, Amen. Whoever's Debbie, bless you, Debbie. Uh my country sing Vincent. Uh, can we pray for, uh, 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 yes, Sheba Q, she said, yes, she received, amen. Can we also pray for, because I want to just kind of take the time to pray for the people. If we can just touch and agree with uh, Darius Townsend. And what is his prayer request? Men of God, please put your prayer request on here. I know he had put it earlier. The, the comments go by so quickly and fast. It's so hard for me to kind of keep up with everyone. So we have uh, Darius Townsend. But I do know Abednego, he asked for prayer concerning his um career his basketball career and his and his wife as well that's the uh ask him who's his pastor about the wife i can deal with the basketball career but the wife i cannot touch unless he went to his pastor first okay okay, okay. so i pray for the basketball career father i thank you right now in the name of jesus as the young man safe yes he's safe he's safe you sure? Yes, I'm sure. That I'm certain of. Father Eda Boskam Rataska de Boskar Kaskushka Timashka Tamantili de Besota Manese Alabose Alakasutu. Ask him how's his prayer life. Abendigo, uh, if I, I think he can hear you. So he's gonna, he says, My how is how is your prayer life? Because I'll yes, get to you. pray for you. And as I begin to pray in the spirit to be to hear what the Lord wants to say, the Lord is still coming about your prayer life. What's going on with your prayer life? Thank you, Holy Spirit. What's going on with your prayer life? Because as I begin to touch in the heavens and begin to speak to the Lord and go into the realm of the spirit for you, the Lord says his prayer life. What's going on with your prayer life? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
I don't see it. See, uh, Prophet, this season, God is dealing with me in a very strategic way. Yes, sir. Because I'm on a 120-day fast. And so um, I'm not so quick to prophesy and to speak um, here quick. Yes, sir. I'm um, hearing before I move. So that's why I'm moving this way because I'm very, very sensitive in this season. And I know that a lot of people in this season is going through the breakings of God. Yes. But God is breaking people in this season. And if we pray against the breaking, then the breaking would take longer. Yes. Because it's time for God to pull some people out of the backside of the desert, out of the prison, out of the wilderness, and bring them before great men and women. And there's some that God is chastising mm. because they did not pay attention in the last season. So they got to repeat it all over again. And there's mm -hmm. some that financial windfall is getting ready to hit them, but the enemy is causing them to be stingy to hold it. Because the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that if the clouds are full of rain and I'm the yeah. clouds, and there's some of them that they just have to sow another major seed and the cloud is going to burst. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've I've been since the last time I talked to you, I've been having some crazy financial windfalls. Wow! I've, I've been having some crazy financial windfalls. That two weeks ago I went to my spiritual father and took him a four thousand dollar seed cash. Wow. That's the type of windfall I'm having. And that was on a Wednesday. And then I went back on a Saturday and took him another thousand. So I gave him five thousand in one week. That's the windfall that I'm having. Um and, wow. and so, so I'm I'm telling the people that God is ready to really bless you. But you have to make sure you know a season. A lot of people don't know a season that they're in. And yes. and, and they run for a word and run from a word. But God says, what did you do with the first word that I gave you? Thank you, Jesus. Did you walk out that first word? Because if you didn't walk out that first word and you expect me to give you another word, then you're just going to be full of words that is not manifesting. And then you're yeah. going to be, I say, uh, constipated. You know, mm -hmm. you're constipated. You're going to be spiritually constipated. And, yeah. you know, so God don't want that. He wants you to now work out the word. The Bible says, the Apostle Paul says that you are to war a good warfare with the prophecies that went over you by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Yeah. So whenever you receive a prophetic word, you got to war with that word in order for that word to come to pass yeah. and then receive another word. Because yeah. you don't want to just keep receiving word, 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 fall up here. And you walk around full of all these words yes. and, nothing, and nothing is happening. You don't, yeah. you don't want to be con, uh, compacitated and constipated. Uh, would you say when someone has to go to the restroom, constipated, constipated. You don't want to do that. So you yeah. want to make sure that, remember the scripture says in Psalms 105 that Joseph was in a pit in a prison. Until mm -hmm. his time, until his time came, because the word of the Lord tried him. So wow. every prophetic, every prophetic word we receive, it has a trial date. It goes on trial. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> have to contend for the word. <laughs> it has a lawyer, it has a jury, and it got a judge. And you are the prisoner. <laughs> Jesus, wow, wow. So you heard that tonight, guys. As the man of God is sharing, we have to really contend for the prophetic word yeah. and really make it our duty uh, to activate our, sorry, I'm looking at the clubhouse here. We also have to activate our prophetic destiny as we're getting uh, these prophetic words just to activate what God has spoken uh, concerning uh, your life and what the man of God also shared concerning uh, many of you. Uh, men of God, if you can take this last person for me, 
Um, because I, I've, I've been on here for two hours. If you could take this last person, oh, I'm going to do a general prayer over the people, uh, Deborah McQueen. And for those of you who are on here, please, I encourage you to uh, give and continue to support this ministry. Amen. As you can go on the website there and you can see all that we are doing. So we do give accountability and you know where your uh, your finances are going towards. So um, um, the De woman of God on here, man of God, Deborah McQueen. Deborah McQueen is an intercessor, the Lord says. Yeah, she is. He's called you to be the intercessor that will feel the pain of individuals. The Bible says Jesus is touched with the infirmities and afflictions of us. And you are one that God wants to be able to feel the pain of those to who you pray for. I hear the Lord says a birthing chamber. You are the birthing chamber that when you pray, God will begin to give birth to destinies, nations, and individuals. And there is an anointing to, to squash family quarrelings, family, wow. quar family quarrelings. Yes. You have an anointing to squash family quarrelings. Like recently in Brooklyn, there was a man that went to his girlfriend's house on his nine-year-old daughter's birthday and murdered her and murdered her 16 year old daughter and her 20 year old daughter. This is recently in Brooklyn. And then yesterday, a football player, an NFL football player in North Carolina did the same thing. He murdered five people and then killed himself. So the guy who did it in Brooklyn killed himself also and now the guy watch this i'm trying to now i'm going into a heavy prophetic warfare now and Thank now then now the guy in south carolina he did the same thing wow. the same thing wow is a former jet player phillips adams kills five including two kids and mm. himself in South Carolina. Wow. And so I'm saying this because God has given this young lady an intercessor's anointing and to deal with family quarrels. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And that's why I brought this up because yeah, people start understanding that when the devil attacks like this, he's yeah. establishing an altar of suicide, murder, suicide, Jesus. establishing it in different pockets of the earth, establishing yeah. in Brooklyn, now in South Carolina, what is going on? And the church has been quiet about it while the enemy is erecting these altars. So when God gives you a mandate to be the intercessor, pray, tear down these altars. My God. My God, Jesus, Saroba Sebrekatai. My people murdered. Why? And then he murdered himself. Mm. And three people murdered in Brooklyn. And then he murdered himself, killed himself. Murder, suicide. So that's the spirit that the enemy has now released in the earth once again on families. So if you have an anointing to pray for families, really put your plate down and pray for families. God will reward you. One of the secrets I found out, this is my 29th year of ministry, is that when you spend time doing what God wants, God will always take care of whatever you want. Jesus. Without, without, you, without you asking him. I got to share with you, prophetess, Yes, sir. Offline, what God has been doing, it's just been crazy. I just, yes, mo most I, certainly, man of God. Just picked most up a certainly. new vehicle. I just picked up a new vehicle. Oh, awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm telling you, God, it's, it's just like, it's just, it's crazy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want the people to really understand this before you go. Yes, sir. That it's very imperative that you know what season you are in with God. Yes, Father. You have to know what season. Because if you know what season you're in, you'll know how to conduct yourself. 
Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And you won't call what God is doing in your life the devil. Jesus. 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 And you won't call what the devil is doing in your life God. Yes, Lord. Because whenever God is working in your life, it's going to appear that it is the devil. Thank you, Lord. Uncomfortable, unpleasant, mm. unkind, and cause you to be a little bit antsy. Yes. Because he needs the poison that's in you to come out of you. Jesus. In order for the poison to come out, he needs to put the heat on you more, Hata. Yeah, he sure, yeah. told you through the circumstances that you can't get out. For an example, mostly everybody that's looking on here receive a stimulus check mm. and receive an income tax check. Yes, God. Did you, did you go to your pastor and sow a special seed to your spiritual leader out of that increase? Thank you, Jesus. Well, that's about a hundred dollars. Thank you, Jesus. When was the last time you sold a thousand dollar seed to your spiritual leader? Bless the Lord, bless the Jesus. I'm asking you the question because God looks at what you do with His money that He yeah, lets you. Because it's not your money; it's God's money. Bless the Father. Because Galatians three thirteen says, "Christ redeemed you from the curse. He He brought you back from the curse of law." So you redeem from spiritual death, you redeem from poverty, and you redeem from sickness and disease. So Jesus. since he bought you, he owns you. And since mm -hmm. he owns you, he owns everything you have. He just allowing you to be a steward over what is his. So when he asks you for properties, listen to this. Remember, yes, God, remember when God asks. Abraham to kill his son? Yes, the, the sacrifice, yes. It, but remember this now. Remember the ram was caught in the thicket. Mm -hmm. When the ram was caught in the thicket, God did not name that place Jehovah Jireh. Wow. Abraham called it Jehovah Jireh. Listen to this revelation. Abraham was able to reveal a purpose and a personality, mm -hmm. in, watch this, and a side of God that has not been released in the earth until he was willing yes. to sacrifice that what was close to him. Yes. When he was willing to sacrifice that what was close to him, God now gave Abraham what was close to him, that mm -hmm. he's Jehovah Jireh, the God yes. that provides. And I want to tell the people, Thank you, you, cannot, you cannot claim God and you cannot say God is your Jehovah Jireh until you are willing to release something that is close to your heart that you will give to God. Because that's when the principle of Jehovah Jireh came into existence. When Abraham was willing to offer up his son. A same thing with, with uh, 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 Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to the rich glory of Christ Jesus. You don't have a right to claim that scripture because everything must wow. be context. You can't take the text out of the context and make it work for you. It has to the context, the text has to work together. And according to the text, it says that you Philippians, you gave not only once to my necessities, but twice you gave for the work of the Lord. Not that I desire a gift. But Thank I you. deny a gift of fruit bear bound to your account. Then he says, but my God shall supply your needs. Yes, See, God. That my God shall supply your needs because you gave unto my work. Since you yes. gave unto my work, I released the prophetic prayer. Yes. I released the apostolic prayer on you. Now, my child, supply all your need according to his rich glory by Christ Jesus. Why? Because you gave into the work of the ministry. So you can't claim Philippians 4.19 as the scripture for your life if you have not sown into the work of the ministry. Many people try to take scripture out of context yeah. and make it work with them and then start yelling and complaining at God when it does not manifest because you don't meet the criteria or the standard of the principle for which it was spoken. Wow. And the people, you need to really understand that 
so you can get your life in line and altar with God. And don't wait until your spiritual leader asks you to sow a seed. Just sow it automatically because you love them. And love is always compelled to give. Love is compelled to give because love is a giving spirit. You can't say you love somebody without giving them. I remember uh, Papa Dizdemina, when I first went to Clubhouse, and I was in this prophetic room. I was in a prophetic room. And there was prophesied to me. And the prophecy did mean a prophesy. And when she prophesied, God pulled something up out of me that was in me for a long time. And such a strong cry came out. Now, I was blessed by it. So what did I do? I took a seed and I rushed it to her right away. She yeah. didn't ask for the seed. And then I came on her broadcast and raised another offering for her. Why? It's called the level of appreciation and honor. You must be able to honor men and honor women that speak into your life and bless your life. That way God will see it and he will start sending people to you to honor you. I had to share that so that people could understand that when we speak into your life, as the voice of God, there has to be a level of appreciation and honor that comes to the vessel that God is using. There's an anointing so heavy on my shoulder. God says about the woman with the alabaster box. Notice it's fire on my shoulder heavy now. When the woman with the alabaster box, Jesus, somebody going to catch it. Someone catch it at the top. A, a, a prophet, you don't feel the fire on you. The fire is on my shoulder. Yes, it's, very, it's very thick and heavy on my shoulder. Like, wrapped around my shoulder the woman with the alabaster box <clears throat> she opened up that box and she poured it on jesus if you was to equate it now and 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 bring it to to american dollars at like fifty eight thousand dollars right what did jesus do jesus did something for that woman that is never done to anybody on the planet, not even his disciples. Now watch this. And that woman was a whore. Wow. Do you, watch this. Do you have a whore's faith? Or wow. are, you whore? are you the next whore that God's looking for? Because the men said to Jesus, if you know who this woman is, that's touching you with her tears and wiping your feet with her hair, you wouldn't let her touch you. Because the woman was a whore. Every single man in the house slept with her. And this is where she got the money from to buy the oil in the body alabaster box. Mm. But Jesus said something very, very powerful in the midst of his disciples. He said, when you invite me to your house, you give me nothing to drink. You didn't wash my feet. You give me nothing to eat. But since I came, listen to Anna. Since I came into the house, this woman has not ceased to wipe my feet, wash my feet with her tears, and wipe it with her hair. What this woman has done shall not be taken away from her. Why? Because God is big on honor to such a degree, he made sure it can't be taken away. That is wherever this God will listen to God, you're talking about God manifesting in the flesh, made this memorial unto a whore. Wow. Whenever this gospel is preached, what this woman has done unto me shall not be taken away from her, but it shall be talked about as a memorial. That is the highest honor that any human being placed on Jesus when he walked the planet. So God is big on Anna. And you must be a man or a woman of Anna. If not, you really don't have a relationship with God. Think about that. That was a war. And he made a memorial unto her. He made a memorial to none of his apostles, none of his prophets. He didn't even make a memorial unto Enoch. Yes. Not even to Elijah. Not even to Moses. Not even to Daniel. But to a whore. Aye. Wow. Man of God, I you, guess that's very, that's very profound and, and powerful uh, what you're sharing. And, you know, uh, what the man of God is, is speaking about is just uh, having that honor 
and, and what you do for God's prophet, what you do for the kingdom most of all, is what's going to last. Um, but this is this is more so about the condition of our heart. And so this is what the men of God is pointing out. Where is your heart? And as, as, as the scripture says, wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And so ultimately, you know, we are talking about uh, for, yes, women of God. So uh, the men of God just came on here just to um, just give greetings, okay? So I, I did say I was going to pray for the other remaining people. So woman of God, Marcella, yes, we will pray for your country. We did not um, overlook your prayer request. Okay. So for those of you who are on here, we didn't overlook your prayer request. Sometimes it goes very, very fast. Okay. So you do have to please be patient with us. We will get around to your name. Okay. So, um, uh, men of God, I want to thank you, uh, for taking the time of your busy schedule and honoring me to come on here. Amen. Cause you didn't have to do it. I know you're, you're a very busy person and doing great things. So if you can tell them about your, your, your website and, uh, where they can find you, so I'm going to um, pray for these people for maybe a few more minutes, and then I'm going to disconnect uh, uh, from the broadcasting. Apostle Alexander Gray, number seven, dot com. That is the website. Okay. Can you say for us one more time, please? Apostle Alexander Gray, that's A-Y, not E-Y. Okay. Number, okay. number seven. Dot com. That is the website. Okay, that, that sounds awesome. So, men of God, thank you so much for honoring me and taking that time of your busy schedule. You've been on here for two hours. So I don't want to go into three, so I do I do appreciate your time. You know, uh, time is really elapsing, so I'm going to try to um, pray for the remaining people and then disconnect for tonight. But we definitely have to um, uh, do another relationship segment as we did last time on Instagram. So I did appreciate that a lot. That was awesome. Wait till you, wait till you hear the testimonies. Yes. I'm, oh. I'm looking forward to seeing them on your broadcasting. What God has done. Yes. I received that, man of God. Bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you and, and shalom, man of God. Thank you. You're welcome. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to take a few more minutes and just to pray uh, for those who had remaining prayer requests. I thank God for the men of God for coming on and taking the time out of his schedule. So thank you for that. Uh, for the very few people that had prayer requests that the men of God could not get a chance to get around to. Okay. So that was not his assignment for to pray for everyone. He just wanted to come on here and honor and honor me. Okay. So I'm going to pray for, um, I'm going to also pray for the remaining people. Okay. Just the remaining people. So I don't want you to feel like forgotten. Okay. Um, and like I said, we've been on here almost going on three hours. So I want to use consideration. I don't want to burn myself out, but I also want to, uh, just to pray for you guys as well. All right. So I did see a Bendigo and I did see Marcella Brown. She wanted to pray for her country. So Father God, I thank you right now, oh God, for Abednego. Father God, our God, as he is asking and petitioning for prayer, oh God, concerning his family. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray, oh God, that you will come. Hallelujah. In this man of oh God's circumstance. And that, Father God, that you will begin to enter by fire. Lord God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, that you will begin to enter by fire and do a supernatural work on his behalf, God. I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, Lord God, for a divine turning around. I uh, also pray concerning his career in the mighty name of Jesus, that uh, Lord, uh, hallelujah, that you begin to remember him. Uh, God, I pray that you begin to answer by fire. I thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that uh, God, that you will open up the portals of heaven. Uh, oh God, open up the windows of heaven concerning his life right now, according to your will. Uh, Lord God, I thank you right now that opportunities will be met. I come against every closed doors. I come against every limitation, every embargo that the enemy is setting up in your life. Abednego, in the name of Jesus, men of God, I pray that there will be no more limitations in your life. For yes, the enemy would even try to set up limitations. I saw like limitations because he wants to slow you down. He wants to stop you. It's almost like he wants to stop your career so that you will not be able to have the finances to support your family. But the the reason why the attack is coming, Abendigo, 
is simply because uh, the Lord has anointed you, amen, as a curse breaker. The Lord has anointed you, amen, as the one that was standing the gap for you and your family. And because you are standing in the gap for your family, the enemy is trying to launch an attack against you and against your family to cause you to give up. But in the name of Jesus, the Lord says, do not be weary and well do it. For yes, in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. And I I don't know, but I see like a door of opportunity opening for you as it relates to business. I don't know why I'm seeing business, business, business. The Lord says to tell you, man of God, that he's going to bless you in the area of business. Man of God, that he's going to cause an uh, increase and expansion. But also the Lord began to reveal to me he's thrusting you as well into the area of ministry and ministry. So think it not strange uh, when things begin to uh, seem as if they're falling apart and things seem uh, a, a disarranged in your life. It's because he's calling you to operate in a place of, of ministry all the more. Lebre and Tiba Kabra and Satabakaya. Yes, even in this season, the Lord's about to give you greater downloads and, and he's going to begin to give you greater revelation. You're going to find yourself and people are going to begin to pull on you and pull on your ministry. And that is why, men of God, that is why you've been feeling the sense of uncomfortability because glory be to God, hallelujah, and this backlash is because of the, the transition that's taking place in your life even now. Transition. And yes, even for your wife, even for your wife, that she will not be discouraged. That she will not be discouraged. I don't know, but I saw her like pregnant in the realm of the spirit. I saw her like pregnant in the realm of the spirit. Nambre pakati ambro and sabra and saka dunde vre. Lende lebro and saka tabakanda la makaya. Rembranda la makaya. And I'm not saying that she's pregnant. I just saw her pregnant. Lebran tabakanda la mra and saya. But glory be to God, every ministry that God has also placed inside of your wife. Yes, even that intercessory grace, that intercessor anointing. Lebran bakala makaya. But she has the ability to open up her mouth. Yes, glory be to God, the Lord said that she has an ability that even when she sings and even when she prays hallelujah god says he hears her prayers but glory be to god the lord says for her not to be discouraged and i don't know men of god is there somebody trying to go back to like school to further their education further their education come on talk back to me real quickly i'm not gonna be on here for too longer too much longer i don't know if it's you or your wife it's just somebody trying to go back to further their education because i see god opening up a door concerning concerning the area of education of education so father god i thank you right now that you're doing for a, a, a prophet of bendigo hallelujah and his family even now so who is that man of god who's trying to go back uh, to i see like further in education Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But the Lord said to tell your wife to be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. Because he's also going to begin to use her in a greater a capacity okay he said i didn't finish my education okay it's you because i saw like i saw like a, a door of and furthering education furthering education i saw that that was getting ready to happen for you men of god but it's going to be a lot of resistance i'm not gonna lie to you there's gonna be resistance but the lord says to persevere and to have resilience Glory be to God, and the door will open up for you. I see him breaking a portal, but it, yes, there's like a hard rock, and you're in a rock in a hard place. But I see God breaking and fighting with you and fighting for you. And yes, that even that area of education shall begin to open up to you. So, men of God, get ready. Hallelujah. Lebro Tanamakaya. And even also in the area of business, of business, of business. And that's what God is going to begin to use. Amen. Uh, concerning your life, your family, so that you can begin to accelerate to another dimension. And that is the word of the Lord concerning you. Hallelujah. So God bless you, man of God. I pray that was a blessing as well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me pray for this. Uh, 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 what's her name? Marcella. I pray for Marcella. She's asking prayer for her country. So Father God, thank you right now. Oh God, let me pray for Marcella. Hallelujah. And her country, I pray, oh God. Hallelujah. That you're sent for the angels of the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God to war on the behalf of her country. Oh God, and let your perfect will be done in mighty name of Jesus. Now, I want to say this. 
I want to say this, and this is kind of in retrospect to what the men of God was sharing. There are times where there are some times where there are some times where um there are certain things that we're not necessarily led to pray for. So um please um do not take an offense if the men of God did not pray for certain things. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of times when we do pray for stuff, there's a lot of backlash and retaliation. So I know a lot of people say pray for this, pray for that, and whatever the Holy Spirit, okay, here's a keyword. Whatever the Holy Spirit says, yes, pray for that one. Don't pray for that one right now. It's not that we are ignoring you, okay? It's not that we didn't see your name. It's just that we, as prophets, we have to be sensitive. So that's what the man of God was sharing, spiritual sensitivity. Maybe that was not his assignment to pray, okay? And then sometimes we cannot pray because God didn't give us the assignment to do that, okay? Notice you always have to be led of the Holy Spirit. And then even if I'm praying for a country, I, I would say, Lord, let your will be done. Um, Lord, send forth your angels. Because now when you're praying for St. Vincent, and I'm praying for St. Vincent, and God didn't tell me to pray for St. Vincent, what would begin to happen? St. Vincent demons going to start attacking demons. A uh, 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 prophetess Dehima, okay? St. Vincent principality that sits there is going to start contending against me, okay? So I don't want to take on any unnecessary warfare. So these are some of the things that I'm, try I'm trying to reveal that we always have to be Holy Spirit led. So yes, there are times I would say post your prayer request and if God is not, if the Holy Spirit is not leading me to pray for something, uh, please be, be sensitive. Know that you're not being ignored. Um, sometimes I would say to you, keep posting it. When I say it, please post it. Also, if we're coming in agreement with someone and we're saying, hey, pray for somebody's healing. The Bible says when they were all on one accord, the Holy Spirit came, okay? So that way, when we pray, when we're all praying for the uh, Holy Spirit to heal somebody, it is better with agreement, okay? So I'm just showing you kingdom protocol. Not that I'm ignoring you guys. I'm not. I hear you guys. Believe me, I do. But I'm trying to be protective of myself and protective of, uh, for all of you. One thing I do that I give accountability for those who come on the broadcasting. I am very protective of every single one of you because I believe it is my responsibility as you guys are sowing and you guys trust me for counseling and mentorship. It is my responsibility that I cover you guys as well. So, you know, what may seem to be as I'm ignoring, I'm not, promise you. I'm trying to avoid certainty in warfare, okay? There are certain things that I see that maybe many of you guys are not privy to. I don't want to open up unnecessary warfare or doors. Okay, guys? So, um, and then uh, whoever comes to the broadcast, I am protected. So I, I know that, okay? I'm not going to bring anybody on here that I'm not protecting you guys up and I don't know their character, okay? So I want to share that with you guys, okay? And just know that I love every single one of you. And I'm going to say uh, say this in closing. Thank you guys for being on here. Uh, and But when we are praying for one specific thing, Okay, I'm praying for, let's stay on one accord. Amen, because this person is really dealing with a situation. And I pray, I want God to heal this person. You know, if, we, if one person praying for this and praying for that, praying for, the enemy comes in confusion. So I'm very strategic in prayer. So these are just principles I'm teaching you uh, all, okay? So thank you so much, every one of you. I appreciate you guys for staying with me and for your giving and for your finances and all your love and support. It goes a long way. And know that for those of you who are on here, I give accountability. And if you ever need to reach me, I make myself available and accessible to you guys, okay? So, guys, I love you. Jesus Christ love you. Uh, live in the expectancy of God. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, all you have to do is accept it in your heart and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess with your mouth that he is Lord and you shall be saved. You can find me on Clubhouse under the name Dehima McLean. Amen. You can follow me on YouTube, Dehima McLean, Prophetess Dehima McLean. On Facebook, Dehima McLean Ministries. Okay. And I'm on here every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So thank you so much. Above all else, follow me as I follow Christ. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And shalom until we meet again. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you and thank you.